Welcome to another show of this week. After his return from the Africa Union Summit in neighboring Ethiopia, the chairperson of the Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, Fesses Mugai, expressed worry that South Sudan's peace agreement is in danger. At the fourth JMEC meeting, which took place in South Sudan's capital, Juba, Festus Mugai voiced his disappointment that the transitional government of national unity had not yet been formed. I am slightly disappointed. Disappointed that I am not here today to see a new transitional government in place. Disappointed that another day has come and gone. This disappointment stems not only solely because of it a day on the calendar was missed, but because the potential, the opportunity, the possibility of a new government is so close, so vital for this country that it must be taken. Every day we spend here, I think of the children I met growing up, without the chance of education, the chance of bettering their own lives, denied through no fault of their own. The Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission and parties to the South Sudanese Peace Agreement met on Tuesday to discuss ways on how to implement the signed peace agreement. Both the Peace and Security Council of the African Union and IGAD are very worried, and as worried as I am, that the August 2015 agreement is in danger on multiple fronts. Every representative I spoke with in Addis Ababa expressed his or her concern at the situation here. Everyone spoke to me of their concerns at the much too slow rate of implementation and the, implica the implications of delay for national and regional stability and for the lives of millions of your citizens. People are watching closely, but ultimately, it is your peace, not theirs. Africa will support you, as will the world, but the responsibility for peace and good governance lies first and foremost on your shoulders, not on the shoulders of others. Present at the meeting in the capital, Juba, were the two parties to South Sudan's conflict and members of the diplomatic community. The meeting called on immediate action to the establishment of the transitional government of national unity, transitional security arrangements necessary for the capital city, Juba, and various issues to ensure that constraints on humanitarian access are removed. Reacting to the outcome of the summit, leader of the Democratic Change Party, Dr. Lama Kol, who was invited to an interview at Radio Miraya, said he hoped the country would soon emerge from its difficulties. Many timelines have been skipped or missed or passed without implementing the issues that, has, uh, that have been uh, agreed. But now that you have a joint monitoring and evaluation commission that is helping the parties to implement the peace agreement, we are picking up. Yes, the peace is slow but we are picking up, and the latest communique from IGAD is actually a boost to the peace agreement. The agreement is an attempt to unite the people of South Sudan, and this is why we must stick to that agreement, because it is the only way that can take us forward. My hope is that South Sudan will emerge out of these problems sooner or later. Speaking on phone, and despite opposing views, Presidential spokesperson Ateni Wek said the South Sudanese needed to come together. I, I hope that, you know, uh, those of the Tolam, you know, and all the other opposition force in the country uh, come back actually to understand that the issue of 28 states should not impede on the implementation process. We need, uh, as South Sudanese, to come back together as a peaceful nation. An official from the SPLM in opposition Ambassador Ezekiel Gatkwoth apologized to South Sudanese for the slow implementation of the peace agreement. We want to appeal to the people of South Sudan, uh, we are sorry uh, for delaying uh, this process. 
uh, uh, as your parties, uh, even though uh, the, the responsibility is taken on the government. Uh, we, we wanted to apologize to you that be patient, peace is coming, peace is going to be realized. We, will, uh, we are committed to peace, Dr. Red McCarthy, who is the chairman of XPL and XPL in opposition, is very committed to peace. He's going to make sure that this agreement is not going to unravel, it's going to work, it's going to be implemented. We want peace and we will have peace as soon as possible. On Wednesday, journalists at a press conference were told that landmines and unexploded ordinances were a very, very serious issue in South Sudan. Highlighting the work being done to locate and eradicate landmines and unexploded ordinances by the United Nations Mine Action Service, the United Nations Mission in South Sudan spokesperson, Ariane Quinter, briefed that there have been deaths from mines since December 2015. There have been six accidents involving mines and unexploded ordnance. This is a very, very serious issue for South Sudan. A total of seven persons have died in 2015 and 23 have been injured as a result. The spokesperson updated on the work the Mine Action Service has been involved in. Mass has surveyed, cleared and released over 13.9 million square kilometers of land. UNMAS identified and destroyed over 29,000 mines and other unexploded ordnance and delivered mine risk education to over half a million people. That's only for the year 2015. The spokesperson said that the work UNMAS has to do in the country is a huge undertaking but they are doing their best to reach areas in the country where there have been accidents and loss of life due to these threats. Our feature this week highlights the work of the Rwandese Force Protection Units who work in Malakal under the United Nations Mission in South Sudan. Their work does not stop under the cover of darkness. Neither does it stop under the hot African sun. Since their deployment to Malakal in the northeastern part of the country, day and night patrols by formed police units from Rwanda have resulted to a drop in crime levels in a protection of civilian sites, which is home to about 47,000 people. Since late last year, a total of 170 Rwandan formed police units, including 37 females, started their work in the Malakal protection of civilian site. They have been making a notable difference. We do patrols day and night, that's a 24-hour 24, 24 patrol, and we also operate in terms of cordon uh, and search operations, where we search for dangerous items or things that can be used as weapons. And we also try to fight the local brews, the local brews that intoxicate the youth mostly, which, if not checked, can cause uh, criminality. With the outbreak of conflict in mid-December 2013, thousands sought refuge in a United Nations compound. Mixed communities have for the last two years lived alongside each other, and it is no surprise that conflict and criminality has been recorded. This is where the formed police units step in, with the responsibility of minimizing crime and any disturbances. Together with community policing groups, order is being maintained. Both the male and female police work together to protect all the men, women and children in the protection of civilian sites. While a secure environment continues to be maintained for the displaced, their lives have improved despite the trauma they experienced. They also hope that peace will prevail and that they will soon return to their homes.
We end our show with our Voices of Peace segment, hoping that we can engage the nation towards peace and reconciliation. Difficult as it is, you are going to have to reconcile. And all of us are going to, including me, I beg you with a bent knee and cap in hand that please, please, you are facing a difficult situation of the losses you have incurred. But the best way to deal with it is to try uh, to, even if you can't forget, to forgive and reconcile.